the message for Luke Walton that night, you're irrelevant to this process. Le'Veon is a unique player, and I think he should be compensated uniquely. Last night was the best day of the year so far in baseball. Why? Last night was about peacocking. I wish I had a sign. There's nothing to see here, people. Move it on along. Okay. LeBron's about winning. That's why he came here. He believes he could win long term. He trusts Magic. He trusts Rob Palenka that they're going to surround him with enough talent mm -hmm. that he will not only get to but win a championship within the, the time frame of his contract. Mm -hmm. He has four years, three plus an option. I am so disappointed once again in Luke Walton. Why? Because these quotes are so outrageously all but kissing the feet of oh, the incoming goodness. superstar. Luke, you don't have to do this. You you don't it, like it, it. It's it's like Luke might as well have said, LeBron James is going to coach me. I'm just hoping to go along for a great ride with that's LeBron James. That's wow. that's what it came across as. Cause he, he Only you the heard right that. way. I heard it, it, nothing that I wanted to hear. LeBron's decision one was not based on Luke Walton. Mm. It's not based on Luke Walton. Luke is an integral part of that, but it's more so. Okay, I got. A three to five year window here to accomplish what I need right. to accomplish. Correct. Where, where are we going? What's what's the situation? We got cap room this year. We got cap room next year. We got draft picks. Mm -hmm. Where are we going to maneuver people? Where are we going to maneuver these pieces to make sure that we're back competitive again and then we got a chance to compete for a championship? Mm -hmm. Then you meet with Luke. The message for Luke Walton that night at 9.01 Pacific time on June 30th was, uh-oh. You're irrelevant to this process that if I'm Luke Walton, I'm thinking I'm, I'm somewhere between offended and just flat out scared. I think you both know that you cannot pay, especially a running back for what he's done as opposed to what he will do. I wouldn't blame Pittsburgh for one more franchise tag and then let him be Kirk Cousins and let somebody laughably overpay for Le'Veon Bell on the open market because all it takes is one team and all it takes is the Vikings to overpay for Kirk Cousins at $28 million. He's not remotely worth that and they will live to regret the day that they gave him that much money. Le'Veon is a unique player and I think he should be compensated uniquely. Granted, he catches 85 balls. That's middle, that's middle to upper level wide receiver skill. 1,300 yards, he's what, third, fourth in the league in rushing? So at some point in time, you guys are like, okay, look, you gotta pay me. So if I'm Le'Veon Bell, say, look at Steelers, I, I could have made it easy for you guys. If you say, give me two years at 30 million guaranteed, I'm at 14 and a half this year, all you're really doing is guaranteeing 2019. I think the running back position is the one position in football where you look at it and you say, hey, listen, He's an elite guy and he caught 85 passes last year and he did all these things for us, but we can have two or three different guys serve those roles with the Philadelphia Eagles. Like that's so I, I I guess I get I guess I get both positions. I'd love to see him get paid long term, but it's the running back position and it's just not gonna happen for you. So you have to change, I think as a running back, you have to change your expectations. Um or you got to play on a bunch of one-year deals like he's been playing on. Last year, what they did with Antonio Brown, it decided the fate of Le'Veon Bell, where they couldn't have two guys be that at the top echelon as far as wide receiver Antonio is the highest paid, and then L. Bell almost basically trying to make twice as much as the highest paid running back. So I didn't think Pittsburgh that he was going to fit in their long-term plans. The Pittsburgh Steelers were in a position have been in a position the last few years that no other team in football could say. We have a consensus top five quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. They are yet to have taken full advantage of that as far as reaching much less winning a Super Bowl. And now they have one year left of that. They have one year left with Le'Veon Bell on the football team. I don't think that's I don't think that is smart business. You're forgetting the rule in the NFL. You gotta pay a good quarterback. You don't gotta pay for anybody else. JJ Watt's not winning games. Odell Beckham, Odell Beckham's now winning games. Antonio Brown's great. Is he winning games? Is Julio Jones winning games? You got to pay for a really good coach, and you got to pay for a quarterback. I think you also got to pay for a really good left tackle. After that, you don't got to pay for anybody. Last night was the best day of the year so far in baseball. Why? Because baseball wasn't rigid. Baseball didn't have unwritten rules. Last night was about peacocking, puffing your chest out, strutting, take the helmet off. Dad throws me BP, showing off.
little flair. You know why Bryce Harper didn't wear a helmet. You know why he wore that bandana so you could see his hair, so you could see his handsome face, so he could be a rock star. Isn't it funny? The individual gets a little love in baseball. Almost felt like WWE mixed with the NBA, right? If you could have been here last night and you would have seen the show that man put on in this stadium, like you're saying, man, this ballpark was electric. Right Last night, Bryce Harper put himself on the map. He needed that not only for the Nationals fans, because the Washington Nationals are kind of in a little bit of a disarray right now, but he also put himself back in the market, like you're saying, with the owners. Hey, man, this kid last night, bro, everybody was off their butts. They, I, there wasn't an empty seat in the house, man. It was absolutely electric, man. You would expect him, after the disappointment of the last couple years in the postseason, the Nationals not being able to make that type of mark, this was his mark. I mean, we... He's been on the scene for a long time, but how's he lived up to? And I, Nick, Nick, I know that you follow LeBron, and LeBron was kind of a lot like Bryce Harper, Sports Illustrated cover boy at the age of 16, now being uh, with the with the Nationals in the face of Major League Baseball, but not living up to the expectations. I wonder if this will be the moment that propels him in the Nationals the rest of the season. Like, they're a team that, while right now they wouldn't be in the playoffs, it's not like they're out of the race. They're playing 500 baseball. They're five games back of the Phillies in their division, and that's with Harper, like you said, batting 215 on the year. You also wonder if it will propel maybe his career forward with Washington because he's a pending free agent. But that's all things down the road, which I know we're going to get to. What this was last night was storybook.